I'm Rob from Barefoot Gaming and today we test out the Pimax 5K Super. Let's review this thing. This is not my first rodeo when it comes to Pimax. I last reviewed their 5K XR BE OLED, so I was curious to see what they decided to upgrade with their 5K Super. Speaking of Super, super fast, if you're not familiar with the Pimax, their claim to fame is a super wide field of view, or the removal of the goggle effect. So the bigger the field of view, the more you can see in your periphery, in the outside edge of your vision. The Oculus Quest 2 is around 90 degrees, the Vive Cosmos Elite, is about 110, the Valve Index sits at about 120, give or take, whereas the Pimax 5K Super sits at a whopping 200 degree field of view. Now, part of the magic in doing this is their unique lenses, which, as I've mentioned before, does affect some warping around your peripheral. This is most noticeable when coming from other VR headsets, as I tested this back and forth between various headsets while testing out the 5K Super, but in my opinion, your eyes do get used to it within a pretty short amount of time. Again, you should be looking straight forward when you're playing anyway. Refresh rate is something the 5K took very seriously this time around with an adjustable refresh of anywhere between 90 and 180 hertz, which many users notice in effects of things like VR comfort and reduction of motion sickness. Now, some people say anything over 90 is fine, but I myself notice the difference between the 90 of the Rift S or Quest 2 and the 120 that I run my index at. Here's the thing that did catch me a little off guard though. This has an incredible FOV and options for refresh settings. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. So at 90 and 120 hertz, you get to keep your 200 degree FOV, but the higher you go, the smaller your FOV. For example, 160 hertz gets you 170 degrees, 185 gets you 150 degrees, which to be fair is still higher than any other commercial VR headset out there. But that is important to know going in. Myself, I found using the 120 hertz and the full 200 was my favorite setting, but you can pick whatever floats your boat. Also new this time around is the screen itself. So gone are the OLEDs of yesteryear to be replaced with LCD panels. The bonus of course is an increased speed of the panels, but you lose out on true blacks. Without going into as many details as I have in the past, so as to not bore my regular viewers that have heard this all before, the quality was very on par with the index although I had to adjust the screen brightness levels a touch to get it right where I wanted. So yes, I miss having the true blacks, but since no one is producing OLEDs that can perform at the same levels of current LCDs, well, that's just the way it is for now going forward, it seems. Speaking of adjustments, the Pimax tool, which is required by the way, has a bunch of settings you can tweak to get your games looking the best they can, as well as the ability to change the color of the light in the front of the visor, as well as the aforementioned refresh rates and the field of view settings. I will also mention from personal experience that if you want this to be as trouble-free as an experience as possible, update your Pi tool to the newest version. That is all I'm gonna say about that. Also, there is still an IPD slider wheel, so you can adjust how close or how far apart the lenses are mechanically. Plus, you can tweak things further in the Pi tool, for example, if you want one lens offset higher or lower, because not everyone's eyes are exactly symmetrical. If you're looking for screen door, well, it's still there if you really look, but nothing like the original headsets, and it's on par with the index in my opinion. The sweet spot or the area of the lens that gives you the best clarity has also stayed about the same from previous iterations, and it's slightly smaller than the index, for example, which really only means that you need to spend some time adjusting it to fit your head correctly before playing. I tested the 5K Super with the Deluxe Audio Head Strap, which I would say is a must have for the Pimax headsets as they are very, very front heavy. And my biggest disappointment of all was audio quality. Now, I should preface this with a word of caution. I am in a unique position of having a slew of VR headsets to test this up against. So I am using a more critical ear as it were to measure this. And I mean, it's not bad. It's nowhere near the index audio quality wise. That's, that's my issue. It's a bajillion miles above the likes of the Quest or the Quest 2, anything piped. And if I'm using it to play Demio or watching movies in big screen, it's great. But if I'm using it with Beat Saber or Pistol Whip, it does come up short. If you've never heard the index, disregard altogether, but it is definitely below. And it's probably even a little bit below the Vive Deluxe in terms of audio quality. But to be fair, you can remove the headphones with two screws on the inside of the strap and plug in your own cans, and then that is not an issue. 
How about comfort? I personally really like the forehead halo strap that they use as it reduces VR fatigue by distributing some of the pressure to your forehead. Now this is the same as their deluxe kits from the past, so no new improvements on that front. As I said previously, the headset is front heavy and I found after a while I could feel the pressure on my forehead. So long term, I would probably add some weights to the back but mileage will vary based on your own head shape. Comfort wise, it does a good job. And as a side note, I noticed zero light bleed from the bottom of the headset between the gasket and my cheeks. Build quality, however, I'm kidding. Build quality actually feels better than any of their previous headsets. They're not only built the headset out of a bit more rubberized plastic, almost like a soft feeling, but they eliminated the need for a power plug on the headset itself. Just a single display port and two USB cables for power. That is it. Now there's still no breakaway box, so if that's a concern of yours, you should know, but it also means there's one less point of potential failure, so six of one, half a dozen of the other, I guess. So then the question is, do I recommend this headset? And the answer is, drum roll, yes, I, I do. Of course, there is a caveat. Pretty much every issue I've had in the past with Pimax has been solved, except for the audio quality and the smaller sweet spot. And even then, I feel bad for picking on them for that, as the speakers are not cheap sounding, it's just not as rich sounding as some of their competitors. And as I mentioned, the sweet spot just takes some playing the one time you set it up, unless you change out who is wearing the headset frequently. It feels right now there is no headset that will do it all. Widest field of view, wireless, best screen, highest refresh, most comfortable, best audio, will it do your taxes? These are all things you need to take into consideration and they will be weighted decisions that you need to make. What matters the most to you will matter less to someone else. Is this the perfect VR headset? Absolutely not. However, I feel with this model, they are no longer a fringe competitor and are right there beside Valve, Oculus, and HTC. So good job, Pimax. Slow clap. Hopefully you found that helpful. And if you did, hit the like button so others know. Subscribe if you wanna know when our videos release. And I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. See ya.